It's our annual year in review for 2021. From housing to Hawkeye, today on the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. This is the Wandering But Not Lost WBNL podcast, where real estate and reality meet. And now your hosts, Jan O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Well, welcome to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. This is episode 195, and you can find all of our show notes over at WBNL Podcast. Dot com. Jan O'Brien, another year comes to an end. Can't believe it really. A lot has happened personally in this year. It has been a <laughs> transformative year for me. No for kidding. For sure. And I am very excited about, I was talking to my sister the other day about, I was thanking her really because she has been instrumental, my sister Lorraine, in um, helping me with this transition to get here and, and supporting me and so forth. And my whole family has, but her in particular. And I was just like, you know what is really, I'm so grateful for is the support of friends and family, but being able to get where I am today as we record this, knowing how great 2022 is going to be because I've already made all the hard work and put Absolutely. all the hard work in and, and made the transition to move from moving to getting my real estate business going again. And, you know, all those things it takes so much effort and time. And I feel like I accomplished that as the year comes to an end. And now I can set myself up without not having to ramp up into the new year and just really have a great year. Well, it's kind of cool because, you know, we talk about how we are not fans of the New Year's resolution. That's not mm -hmm. anything we uh, talk about ever. We, we're not believers in that, but we are very much believers in setting the setting your intentions. And your intention to move to Florida has been set for a while now. And you, you uh, succeeded in that, uh, achieving that goal before the deadline date. Uh, Cause you kept, it was a little, it was a moving target for a while, but it, you moved it up and you hit it and it's awesome. And here you but are. You know what, Matt? And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm putting it out there that part of what I'm doing before the year ends here this week is I'm taking a couple days off, especially over this weekend to really Sweet. put my game plan together for the next yeah. one to five years. And I'm going to do the same thing. I've already been thinking a lot about it. Where do I see myself? You know, what does that picture look like? How, in our businesses for me personally sure. and you know wh where else in florida i'm going to be or you know what i mean i'm just really excited about that because i do believe i'm living proof that you know you really put your intention and energy into something and take action every day it can happen right so. and i think what you're talking about you know you doing the five-year plan and for those of you watching the podcast you will be able to see this but if you're just listening to us you know jan and i are we're we're we're, we're at the end game <laughs> right. And it is pretty cool to know that you still have a lot of uh, opportunity and excitement mm -hmm. and things that can really happen and come to fruition at the end game. And so instead of counting yourself out there at the end, um, it can be the best five years of your entire career. So and next week, as we move into January, let's do that thing episodes coming up where we will talk a little bit more about that and about choosing your focus words and we'll give you some tips and things that work and we'll, we'll revisit that because that's part of what I'm going to be doing. Like what is my focus and what are, what's my mantra or buzzwords for 2022? We did that in 2021 yep. and I have uh, uh, excitement around that because I've been doing, you know, I'm not there yet, but it will be. And then we'll talk a little bit about that and share that with you as well as part of your business planning and your personal growth. So Matt, what do we have on our, oh my gosh, that is a gorgeous image, the 2021 year end review. What are we going to talk about here today? Well, we're going to, we're going to dive in and we are going to go kind of we, what we did. We do this every year and we, we go through the, the interwebs and pull out some top stories and some, uh, some uh, info that's gone on throughout the year. There's so much that's going on. It was interesting as Jan and I were talking, preparing for the show notes today. It's like it doesn't. It's not like this doesn't happen all the time, but for some reason, it feels like everything that has happened this year is connected to everything else that has happened this year. Don't you think? I mean, uh, it yes, is more definitely... interwoven. Yep. And, and it is, oh, the, the the cause, which you know, obviously, COVID was the I, I the the big thing, right? It has been for the last two years now, practically. Um, but everything is so interwoven because of that. We decided we were going to have more of a conversation today um, about uh, everything that's gone on, as opposed to just going through topics along the way. 
However, for all the topics, you can go over to our show notes. We have a ton of links uh, that go to some really great websites um, that will give you great visuals, great information, and it will be your one-stop place when you want to go mm -hmm. and see what the hell happened in 2021. So that's and that one one thing I I want to I always like to to, to call out, and I, I need to put the one the YouTube always does one too, but the Google search. The Google oh. Internet search, the video that they do always really emotionally captures what are the key search words, but they put it together in a, in a clip and it is the common themes. And so I, Matt and I had said, these to me are the top stories. And yeah. then I, we started doing the research and then I went and looked at that and I'm like, oh my gosh, that encapsulates what you're talking about. How That video was so powerful. It's two minutes it? and six seconds. It's not that long. Remember, yeah, I'll, I'll watch try it. to embed the video into the show notes if I can, just so it's there mm -hmm. and easier for you to find, but it is yes. a great video good and the way they did it was so great too you know with actually put, typing in the search bar i don't you know i don't remember mm -hmm. that from, from years in the past but it was pretty cool so i guess the, the the top story we can just start with which we've already talked about is the, that covid well hmm, continues Isn't yeah the nice? lingering pandemic right yep that's exactly and right. honestly i feel like what you just said it's because of that event which last year we were really calling it the great accelerator you said something to me a little while ago about it another word that you called it i can't think of the word right now but it wasn't as an accelerant it was as a uh maybe it'll come back to me because it is the key thing that his that then is interwoven into these other topics we're going to talk about from everything from the economy to workforce to the, the state of our culture. It has to do with us as a human race, as a culture, as Americans, you know, dealing with it, right? And all the fallout right. from it. And, and I think what's, what has happened with uh, COVID that uh, people haven't really caught on to for the most part yet. Some have, obviously. But really, this we are now in the phase where this is moving from a pandemic to an endemic. And COVID is here forever. COVID is here to stay. And I think there was a there was a, a point in the last two and a half or two years or so when everyone was on the path of let's get let's beat COVID. Well, as hey, and part of this might be because of our response to COVID, <laughs> but COVID is now is not going away, right? COVID is going to become a part of our lives from now on, and how we're going, how we all will. Um, interface with that and relate to that and and uh, mm -hmm. deal with that is going to be different because before it was, you know, how things were changing along the way. Now, how things have really changed for good. And I think that the better, mm -hmm. the sooner that everyone gets on board with that, the better things are going to be. It becomes basically the new strain or the new whatever, like the flu, right? the flu has the influenza uh stuff the flu each year and a different strain it's a similar process it's just this happens to have become you know this was just so you know uh, uh you know what's the word i'm looking for it just it was so easy to catch basically right. and to spread and then yep. you know because of all the things that have gone on in different parts of the world but in our country you know with with people at least getting some vaccination, people getting sick and having that. But you're right. That becomes the thing. And that leads to where I feel like people are today where, because, I mean, we have, if you haven't looked at the St. John site, St. Uh, what is it? John Hopkins. Uh, yeah, John Hopkins site which to me in the beginning was just the most brilliant site as far as tracking the numbers and it's it's uh Matt showed me these numbers and I'm like holy crap it really puts yeah. it into perspective what Check. what Look Check out the worldwide numbers and the United States numbers, Jan. I, when I looked at this from 2020 look, compared to 2021. So yeah. Far. And these were the numbers we used in our podcast last year, which is the same time last year. So this is really apples to apples, you know, where we are. Last year at this time, worldwide, there were 82 million cases and 1.8 million deaths. Now contrast that to today, where there are 280 million plus cases. Uh, in the United States, and over no, five, that's worldwide. That's worldwide. I mean, excuse me, yeah, worldwide, and over five point four million. No, that's not cumulative between the, since it began. You sure it's just twenty twenty one numbers? Because that's no, 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 no. That's real. total. Those are total deaths. Those are total death numbers since twenty twenty. So we're not no, comparing no, no. one point eight total death from COVID. These are these aren't twenty twenty one numbers. These are how where we stand today. In okay, but it, but one uh, of the five point four million deaths attributed to COVID, one point eight happened in happened. twenty twenty. That's yeah. the way to look at that. Holy yeah, yeah, crap. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Got right. it. 
Yeah, and then the United States numbers are staggering as well. For all the people that I remember saying in the very beginning of this, that this is just like the flu, you know, and I think people don't realize how many people get die every year from the flu, which can range all the way up to 60, you know, thousand people, which is a lot of, that was a big number back in the beginning. 60,000 people die from the flu every year, even mm-hmm. though that was, a, that was mm-hmm. an outlier number, but still I heard that a lot, mm-hmm. right? Uh, last year, this time there were, there had been 19.7 million cases in the United States with 342,000 deaths. Now, the cumulative total of all cases and deaths in the United States are 52.2 million cases and 800, a staggering, I think, 815,000 uh, deaths. Million. 815 but, million. No, no thousand. Oh, that, oh. That, that shouldn't be there. So it's 815,000 deaths. Oh, oh yeah. Which hello. is a crazy number when you were using 60,000. Almost 000, a million. Yeah, which was using which was using uh, which we were using sixty thousand as this horrible number we didn't want to get to. I remember back when this started, it's like you know we might get to where we lose a hundred thousand people. Oh boy, or we're doing great. People. We're doing great if we only you know lose two hundred thousand people. Well, we've mm-hmm. kind of shot blown past that number. It's uh, interesting. Well, and here's the thing that I think leads to our next point that we're going to talk about is that depending on where you get your news or where you research your information, you got strands of people who are saying and it just popping into my head because my sister works in a um sure. my sister carrie who is just getting over covid that happened from a you know getting exposed while we were all together over early christmas she works in a, a pediatrician's office and she's going back to work now after clearing the protocol and so forth and has said that it's crazy how many cases she has to upload because that's what that's how this all gets reported sure. so so there is there are cl- there are claims out there of people writing down everything's related to COVID too. I just read an article that said so many cases aren't even getting reported as COVID. So there was a particular story I read about a couple that lost someone and they can't get certain things that were set up through the government through the things that they passed because the um, the, the death. The death was definitely from COVID-related stuff, but it did, they didn't put it down on the death certificate, so therefore they're not able to get it. So there's reporting of inf- misinformation. You have the one side saying everything's COVID when it really isn't, and then something's not being reported. And so it is what it is, but the numbers are the numbers, and the, the hospitals and so forth are supposed to post all these things. And, you know, you have the conspiracy theorists saying, well, you know, they're, in the beginning it was about putting all that stuff in because then they can get some government money and make sure. everything be COVID, right? Which leads to how everything has become too politicized. And yeah. that to me is the sad, sad, sad theme of where we are in this yeah. country. It started last year and it really, you know, it, 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 it didn't start last year. It just started to come to the forefront because of COVID as the great whatever, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And everything is about a political view. I don't care what it is. And I'm so tired of, I'm almost ready to totally disconnect from social media, to be quite honest, Matt. I start looking at things on Twitter or whatever, and I have to stop because it seems like people cannot just be kind or be you know, normal, it ha- normal has become what side of the fence are you on? Everything is somebody's fault. And it's just demoralizing. And, and it's just, I don't know, what is the word uh, that I'm trying to find that is just, I can't take it anymore. It's like, it's just overwhelming and depressing. You know, what's interesting to me about the, um, about social media and, um, you know, any, on any of the platforms, really, it kind of depends on what you're searching for. True. Because I really don't have that same experience on social media. Because I guess I just don't search for it, right? I don't. I think, it doesn't yeah, show up. Maybe you. Okay, so you're right. If you go look, like I started following a couple feel good, like positive story sites, and then of course that's what shows up in your feed. Right. You know. That's what I mean. I mean that, what I what I look at. You read follow, people's comments. Don't do you find that? I do I mean, sometimes. Uh, I'll okay. tell you. I, I you know I don't go on. I don't. First of all, let's just state. And I know don't you are the same it. way. You and I have both really. Um, step back from social media this year. But I know I certainly have. I, I looked at what I was uh, like on Facebook. I hardly, I mean, we post it from work, but I know I haven't posted the personal stuff in months on there, you know, because I just feel like, you know what, it's, I'm, it's time for a little mat time. 
right? Let's pull back from all this stuff. But what I think was interesting, what I was just talking about is I follow so many national park things and Disney things and all that kind of stuff. And I'm going to tell you that kind of stuff. And I follow a lot of Marvel stuff because of course I'm a little big Marvel fan. Those fan bases and those people that have that interest are not political. And for the most part, because there's always people, right? But I, I just don't, I don't, I'm not bombarded. So I appreciate what you're saying. And I totally know what you're talking about because I do it too. I'm not saying I don't ever do it. But when you go, but if you get around that, people, that's what happens. Like that's what happens. Everybody wants to start I mean, it talking really gets your blood boiling. Right. Yeah. And, 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 and it happens over the holidays. Now we had a holiday where we, we just didn't talk about any of that. And that's the rules in the house now that we don't talk about things political because it's just so it, it is divided. We fall and it, you know, and it, it's all good to have good. I mean, here's the thing. It's one thing. Everybody can have different opinions. Our entire country was founded on different schools yes. of thought. It's that's just right. the way we treat each other has changed, which, which really, I think, leads to to me the next big point in, in Wait, before we go there i want to, i found something that i thought was fascinating to this very point mm-hmm. um this was a question that was asked and it was asked in 1960 and polled in 19 uh or 2019 the same question was polled and it was the um how let me find the actual question itself oh whether or not if you would approve if you were a parent whether or not you would approve of your child marrying a person of the other party mm, right the other so party. if you were a democrat okay, in, in 1960 if you were a democrat only four percent of parents said they did not want their kids to marry a republican and if you were a republican it was exactly the same four percent of people said they would not really. want any, right so I, I'm, I'm sure you can guess this number is highly inflated from 4% now. Uh, in 2019, if you're a Democrat, 45% of parents said they did not want their child marrying a Republican. Wow. See, there it is. And and for the Republican side, if, if you're a Republican parent, 35% of, a, of Republicans did not want their uh, children, child marrying a, um, a Democrat. I did think that was fascinating because that, that really that, lays that, all... just, that explains it right there. I mean, that, that, like insert whatever the topic of the time is. And the topic of this is what political party do you belong to? And, you know, what side of the fence are you on? And right. And we're right and you're wrong. And and then and then the uh, the the. the the totally crazy stuff that's out there that's conspiracy and just off the wall is scary. Frankly. Right. So to that very point, Jan O'Brien, if you want to get a little coaching from Matt Emerson and Jan O'Brien on this, I can tell you there are three things that you can personally do in 2022 that will help to get you out of this. If help, not to get you to help us get mm-hmm. out of the situation we're in. And the first one is to focus on issues rather than, rather than parties, focus Good. on your issue and focus on things that are happening in your local uh, market or your market. Well, market too, but your, your local mm-hmm. politics. So mm-hmm. focus on issues rather than, than uh, parties break out of your media bubble, which I know people talk about all the time. And we all know that we're in, we're all know we're siloed, but break out of that, just break out of it. And that doesn't mean necessarily you have to just every day, watch everything, but just, Be aware and every once in a while, get a little glimpse of what's going on on the other side, right? Um, And then that last thing is just learn to listen. Learn to listen because what is happening now, and Jan and I have talked about this a lot. We talk about this a lot with working with buyers and sellers and clients Mm -hmm. is that you have to listen to their needs and what is in it for them because you're never going to have a breakthrough and you're never going to be able to have bring come together and have a communication, any sort of conversation, if you're not listening to the needs. Now, you don't have to agree. You don't have to agree, but here's the deal. They're not automatically wrong. That's what you have to do. So there's our top three. Uh, you know what? Great advice from the wise wizard, Matt. Thank you because I love it a hundred percent. And I am going to continue what I'm doing where I don't really imbibe. I, I, I watch, I'll go to Twitter to look at headlines, but as soon as I start going down the rabbit hole, cause I don't really like to watch the, you know, I watch local news. I've gone back to watching some local right. news cause I'm interested in seeing what's happened locally and sure. they'll, they'll touch on some of the, um, national stories. And, um, but honestly, I just do it for headlines, make sure I'm not missing something. Yeah. And then as soon as it gets down into the red or black or this or that and negative hating, um, I'm done, you know, and I'm, I'm going to spend less time on social this coming year. And, uh, to your point, you know, in my downtime, do things that, that are uplifting and positive. Right. Mm-hmm. So I, I think so you were just, we all do our part. Part. 
Yeah, exactly. We all do our part to be better. Right. And, and because it, it is, there are so many stories and we've got great links for you to go. And just to, we wanted to hit on a couple things that were staggering to me on the number of, of mental health, the, how the mental health has permeated everything in our culture this year. And you, yep. and you see it in sports. Yeah. So if you think about in the Olympics, yep. Um, if you, uh, I, I can think of, um, the goalie for the golden Knights, Robin Leonard, who's a real outspoken person for, uh, you know, bringing mental health to light and how it really has impacted so many folks in sports, but that's just one thing, but that draws attention to it because of celebrity sort of status. Yeah. And that's the beauty um, of that. That's using your voice in a really positive way. Yeah. Right. A hundred percent. But we have a, a, a link to the, to an article that says, 19%, 47.1 million of people in the U.S. are living with a mental health condition nationwide. That's up 1.5 million since last year. What? And there's a lot coming out with um, the, the mental health of younger people and the things that are happening with social media and how there's so much more anxiety. And this has been building for years, but it's all really, again, the pandemic as the accelerant, you yep. know, bringing all these things to light. Um, really scary stuff in there. You know, the, the last one I saw, Matt, was one in three Americans. This is from Boston University Public uh, School of Public Health, the real set depression rates has persisted into 2021 climbing to 32.8 percent affecting one in every three american adults yes it does it, it's a staggering number but really not surprising is it yeah so you know and, you and, know, then, and, and just talking about mental health just a little bit i mean this is uh it's a little bit of a, a leap but not really um you, you know, schools opening back up and and kids getting back into the classroom this year has been a uh, uh, must do, I mean, a really needed thing for the kids and the parents, because think of the, you know, I mean, Jan, neither Jan or I are, uh, uh, having to, to, to deal with, uh, you know, children, you know, running off to school, but at the same time, you know, you, we can empathize with these parents who are dealing with their work from home, get their kids online at home, you know, all of that, the stress that is around all of that. Here's what's so interesting. You know, my sweepy is a, uh, an elementary school teacher and she is um it, there was a lot of hesitation about going back to the classroom because you there is that worry about you know the the the, the um virus and all of that and how are the kids gonna you know react with the guidelines that are put in place for their health and safety um that all actually has not been an issue you know masking has not been an issue in my wife's school the kids are really resilient with that they don't have a problem with that mm -hmm. you know but there has been and I, and I can speak only because of this experience, but I know that more wide broad, broadly across the world, you know, there, there is going to be a little bit of a curve that's going to be really interesting to look back on in 20 years to see where these kids are educationally, because they are behind. They are behind. You know, you just didn't learn the same way. And not because you can't, this is my belief, not because you can't learn online, but nobody was trained to teach online. It was like you were literally thrown in it on the day that it all happened. Yep. You know, it's like one day you were teaching in the classroom, the next day, everyone in the world was <laughs> teaching remotely. And there was no training for that. You know, so there was a lot of a, a lot missed in that first yeah. quarter of that uh, pandemic. And then last year, you know, Cal some California schools went back pretty early, uh, but there were some schools that barely even went back, you know, last year. So right. there's we won't no know until years from now. To watch. And I think what's important right now is not to focus once again, getting back to the dividedness of everything. Don't focus on all of the noise around it. Focus on some solutions to make sure the kids get back up to speed because for crying out loud, that's what we need to be focused on. Come together and figure out how we can make this better. Focus not on the issues. Exactly. Anyway, but mental health is a huge one. And we have to watch it because it's not, an, you know, there, an, I like that we're, there is a spotlight on it and it's not, yeah. you know, it, it has to come out of that place where there's a stigma involved and people, that's what people don't want to talk about it and so forth. And, and, and I think it, that maybe this next topic, we're going to talk about the workforce and the whole, what really happened with the pandemic and how, how the, you know, all of the employers of the, of the, of the country and world have had to make adjustments. I mean, you know, if you're depending on again, your headlines, it's like, uh, well, this is causing, you know, the fact that there was unemployment checks is causing people not wanting to go work. No, what I think happened 
is people are uh, reevaluating that I don't need to go back and get paid 10 bucks an hour somewhere. That's exactly you know, right. I can, you know, it's time for the minimum wage to be higher for the people that are the, the everyday workers, you know, and maybe I, maybe the pandemic helped them realize that they want to go and do something that's more meaningful. And so yep. that's the adjustment the employers are having to make that you, you, you can get, you can attract people, but you have to have a good environment for people to work in and they need to get paid decent wages. That's what's happened. People, are I not, love it's it. not that they're not working. They just went and found a better thing to go do. Or want to find something better to do. That was what was remotely. Really, you know, I thought this was interesting, Jan, because this is right up. You were, we're, we, we, we get out of the corporate world right in the time we probably should have been there because this is all about culture, right? Yeah. It's all about companies that don't have a good company or corporate culture are failing today because you have to be connected to your people. You have to have that engagement. You have to have compassion and caring. It's fascinating to me to, to, to kind of go through the statistics and all that. They were talking about, I saw a quote somewhere when I was doing the research on this, that that a lot of what's happened in the workforce today, and it is right, it's kind of flipping, right? We're, we're the, the corporate structure has controlled the workforce forever. And now it's like, oh, sorry, you know, the workforce is starting to take There's over. Again. You, you see it all the time, right? <laughs> and they're calling it instead of the, you know, a, like a take on the great recession, the great resignation. Yeah, I read because that people, article. Yeah. I read people an article are like, called I'm the out. great resignation. Yeah. There was, I forget where this was from, and it might have been from the, uh, the was it? Oh, I'll have to find it. It'll be in our show notes. But that they, they did a survey and 52% of C-level um, uh, employees expect employees to come back to the office. 52%. That's the number of people that you know are like, yep, everyone's coming back. And we've talked about this for years, Jan. Most CEOs do not like a remote working because they always think their people are not, they're not getting the money out of their workers, right? So 52% of the, the company uh, heads think people should come back. But the number... Um, of workers that want to come back is 37%. That is a disparity that they're going to have to figure out because that's yeah. pretty large, right? And honestly, it, you know, it, it culture, the workplace culture, that is huge because that is where the ones that are getting this on the cutting edge are going to end up with the best talent. And the ones that go clawing yep. and screaming, wishing it could be the old way are just going to cycle through people who aren't, you get what you pay for basically, right? You know, we talked a little bit a few minutes ago about, you know, the Google searching and the world searched how to start a business yeah. more than how to get a job Oh yeah, in 2021, which I think is fascinating. Yep. You I know, looked at just... that too. There's a way more businesses like people filing for LLC. There's a lot of people doing that. Now we know that even though there's that, there will be a lot of that where some people aren't meant to do that and they'll cycle sure. through and figure out or they'll go get more skill set training and maybe move into it. And plus the types of jobs are shifting yep. you know, to that. I mean, if you just go do anything, go to Indeed and look at, there's a whole category just for remote work. You can filter yep. by remote work and then look for tons of jobs. And then of course, everyone else is, uh, that's out there is having to be competitive. They're having to have better wages and offer bonuses and other perks that people want, including what's the culture. So, you know, that sort of leads to the how that impacted the economy and housing is our next topic, you know, in the housing outlook. Um, what's interesting if we talk about remote work for a second is that I was talking about it all year in, in uh, the report, the market updates I do for Nevada and Florida. Right. And that has become a big consideration. It will be moving forward how people are looking for housing, meaning if they're like, for example, I have a client closing this week and they are completely moving to Florida from Colorado because they're really ready to be closer oh, yeah. to the okay. to the beach, but they can only do it because he can work remotely hundred percent now. So that is a huge, uh, you know, influencer in where people have migrated to doing things that, you know, picking houses that if they have to lock down again, I think this is where people's mindset is creating space like your house really has become your right. sacred space that you can work and the kids can do remote work if you have you know go to remote learning if we had to again and so that's that's impacted it quite a bit right but the interesting thing just to do quick not to do a whole housing thing is you know because we did it all throughout the year we talked a little bit about it low inventory low mortgage rates and pent-up demand really created two big things that happened one we're going to have record sales in the U.S. this year. Um, yep. In 2020, there were 6.5 million homes sold. In 2021, it's going to be higher than that. It's estimated to be about 6.9. And going into 2022, it's right in alignment with that again. It's going to be another 6.9, 6.8, 6.9 record year. 
uh, for home sales and home price appreciation is going to make an adjustment. So during the pandemic, you know, no little to no inventory, you know, we, we saw these crazy things like 20% increase in appreciation in 2020, 2021, we'll see what the numbers are, but I, it depends on where you are, but it could be right. anywhere from 18 to 20% or higher. Again, another year of that, which has pros and cons. It's great if you're a seller and you want to be able to cash out and go someplace else, but that became a, a problem in itself. And, and, you 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 know you have the mentality of look at all this money I'm going to make I have all this built in equity but where do I go because there's right. not you know but people have the mentality of I want to sell my house and I want to go find a house that's cheaper well hey you sell high buy, high. buy low you know you you sell high you buy high or you <laughs> do what right. some people did you sell high and you rent for a while and you wait and see what happens but that's kind of some of the things that created now it's all projected that we're going to still probably see first quarter of 2022 a continuation of this high, uh, you know, demand, low inventory, more properties coming on the market. And I don't think we'll see double digit appreciation. And eventually it might take another year. We'll get back to three to 5% appreciation, which is healthy. We can't continue to, to have 10, 15, 20% appreciation. No. And what's happening is it's buying, it's, it's pushing the average home buyer out of the market. Um, people that have the luxury market has done well because people are so flush that are in the stock market. The stock market has done well for most people and there's yeah. a lot of cash out there. Uh, just in our two markets that I look at year, you know, just in the last month, uh, 20, you know, 30, about 30% 30 of sales in Vegas and here in uh, parts of Florida that I'm in were cash. Okay. So, uh, you know, people are tapping into that. There's a lot of investors. There's a lot of people buying up houses that are corporate. Uh, and, you know, there's articles out there about we're becoming the renter nation and the rich are getting richer and the people aren't yep. being able to buy the American dream. And we'll see what happens with all of that. But part of that is uh, there's truth to that because the average person would get pushed out of a, a, so many multiple offers this year. And the sad part, though, is whether it's cheaper to buy a house and have a mortgage with the interest rates, even though they may dip up to high threes, maybe yeah, to four it. this next year, but high threes, right. the rents are higher. So, you know, whole nother dynamic there. But if you're in the real estate business, which is most of our audience, it's going to be another good year. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's your, the bottom line you there. You have to find your niche and your what you're going to do and, and, and understand these trends. And we'll talk about that in 2022. But it's interesting just talking about the economy right now and just how they're, you know, it, it, it has really recovered so much from, well, it wasn't unknown what was going to happen with the economy. And there's all the talk about inflation right now and, you know, how that is really driving even more the political conversation that, that's going on and gas prices and all of that kind of stuff. I thought I found an interesting statistic as I was searching around just people's comfortability level and their, you know, their their feeling about what was going on and, and the money they do have. Because people do have in America more money in pocket than they ever have had. Exactly. Right. Because they're well, hey, there was nothing to do, and there's nothing to do but save your money for a while there, right? But it like everything else has got a very weird breakdown, when, not weird, it's very uh, understandable. Um, the people that are are holding back on their money and not putting it into the economy are, are people of color. The LGBTQ, um, did I get all the numbers there? All the, all the letters, LGBTQ. T, LGBTQ. T, A, T, yeah, T, plus. Uh, um, uh, are holding back and you know you, you it, when there is not that uh, confidence in the in the economy you know and people are holding back on that that just helps fuel everything else that's going on and it just shows you more that we need to and you know we didn't really even talk about this in the beginning although it's a, really a part of the divided we fall just the race relations in the company the country are are broken and they have always been broken this is not new but it certainly mm -hmm. is louder than it ever has been and we need to figure it freaking out because right. The disparity that we have and women, that's another thing. Here's the thing I thought was interesting, too. I found out about women in the workplace, just backing up a little bit, that, you know, um, the the you know, the number of women in, in executive positions has grown 
and managed position has grown tr tremendously over the last you know 10 15 years whatever it is COVID is kind of starting to change that a little bit again because of home life right and they they they're to a place right now that they need to focus on other things and they have been pulled back out of the workforce right and then you know replaced by a much more you know old white guys so it's not a good thing so i and i and, and we will focus on this because the country is very aware that's one thing i think is kind of cool about what's been going on is that everyone is seems to be there seems to be the collective consciousness that things are are are, are we're verbalizing the brokenness of our mm -hmm. of our of our society i think a little bit more interesting we'll see what happens so um, I, I know, I, 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 but, and it's just not going to be fixed overnight. And it's, a, it's, no. it's, it's whether people are willing to have conversations and kind of go to those points that you were talking about. And, you know, so when you have up here, crazy climate, yeah, you know, I mean, honestly, uh, we continue year after year to have, there's so much data that is written on this. Uh, and if you want to have, want to watch a really Ser uh, you know, interesting movie that really is a reflection of is climate change real or not? Watch uh, Don't Look Up. Okay, that's on Netflix, which is really, you know, the premise is it's got a great cast. Uh, Leo um, DiCaprio, yeah. Meryl Streep, Jonah Meryl. Hill. Right. And it's, uh, you know, the premise is as a, a, an earth killer comet heading to the U.S. and I mean, heading to the earth and it's, you know, and uh, they're, you know, they're going to the president and they're, and it's all about the spin. And it's all about the political, the politicalization of everything and how there's so many non-believers that it's not really happening and how social media can take over. It's really an interesting, an interesting, uh, you know, take on everything we're just, we're talking about today about the earlier piece. Yeah, we're, that, it's on that Netflix, I think. Um, it is certainly it, on our list. Don't look think up. I, just go check yeah. it out. It's absurdly scary that it could be, you know, something like this is happening and we're not all taking it serious. On the uh, positive it's really, side of, it's really about climate change in a way. Yeah. Um, On the positive side of climate change, though, the um, statistics and the surveys that are are being um, brought in uh, over the last you know year or so have shown that the American public, uh, the majority of the American public, mm -hmm finally believes in global warming, you know, which is a shift than where it yeah. was. And getting back to Google again, the world searched impact of climate change more than ever in 2021, which right, I thought there you was go. interesting. That so, an awareness. Again, it's, it's that awareness that's yeah. out there about what's going on. But you don't, you don't be, have to, but Matt, you just have late. to be living somewhere where when's the last time the devastation of those tornadoes ever yeah. hit? Oh. The flooding, the wildfires, just on and on and on the, the weird temperatures that we continue to have year. Yeah year after year, uh, you know, so you go do your own homework on all of that, but, uh, but that's something that continues, you know, until we figure it out, you know, exactly. Uh, and, and I'd hope, you know, if, if something's not done on a, on a collective scale through all the leaders of all the world, then there won't be an earth for people in the future. We well, that's exactly, that's exactly, right. <laughs> you know, but all right. So climate change and then, uh, yeah, let's get into, all right, now we're going to end a little bit and just talk about the fun stuff. And we certainly, I, I haven't gone to the movies yet. I'm not really ready to get into the movies because I like the idea that you can go watch. You can, if you're HBO max user and I like Absolutely. this new thing, they're like, you can go see it in the theaters or you can watch it for the next 30 days on, you know, where you might be streaming. I think that's a cool feature that some I of these uh, studios are doing with the streaming services. So Matt, are you going to start? What are your top? Well, why don't we just do both parts? Like uh, I'll, I'll start and I'll do my top. I'll do my number five and then you can do your number five. How okay. Are we talking TV one? shows or movies? Just Let's TV do shows. streaming. Yeah. Streaming shows. Streaming so, shows like series. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Got it. All right. So my number five, um, and if you are at all a, a podcast listener, you know that I'm a little bit of an MCU fan. <laughs> now I had to scold Jan because I happened to cut, see her list and she was trying to put all MCU shows. Well, as they were all number. good. <laughs> so I tried to break them out. So, uh, so my are, are they five, pretty much all on your list as your top five? Kind of, well, kind of. What do you got? Um, my number five is the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Okay, that is my number five. I love that show. I thought that was fantastic. I, anything with the MCU, I love because I love this deeper character development. Yeah, and doing it and streaming it on Disney Plus is brilliant because you get freaking six hours of development of these characters. Where, you know. The Winter Soldier, you know, well, he had pretty good, he had yeah. quite a bit, but you know what I'm saying? You just don't get as much exposure to those characters. So number five for me was the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. My number five was Mayor of Easttown. Brilliant. I, that was in the beginning of the year, HBO Max, brilliant. 
I mean, just amazing. She is an it just exceptional actress. It is yeah. amazing. And no matter what she does, you would you would even think that she's not British and uh, what it's Kate um, yeah, Winslet. Winslet. Yeah. Uh, she is literally from the Midwest, wherever that was set. American. You know, she she had yeah. she nailed the dialect. Okay. So my number four, while we're on that, is Mayor of Easttown. Okay, <laughs> so very that's good. my number four. Then my number we, four was Hacks. I loved Hacks. Gene Smart, brilliant. I enjoyed that every episode. I can't wait; it's coming again. It is. Um, I, I think she was great in it. I love the storyline between her and the younger uh, character. Um, it's brilliant because it's a mixture yeah. of like you know old school and it's Vegas and. The young, you know, millennial trying to, you know, it's just funny and and delicious. It was, it was, it was a great wonderful. show. The problem with picking a top five streaming list is there were so many good things to stream. I know, but I, you know how I wrote my list, like what I couldn't wait to go watch. Yeah, I know. That's how I did mine too. Oh, okay. um, uh, and Jean Smart was in Mary of Easttown too. She was the mom. Yeah, in, in she was great in that so too. You, Jean Smart, year. you can't go wrong with Jean Star, uh, Smart film. So. What was your number um, three? Number three for me was WandaVision. I thought WandaVision great. was so clever right it's, it's the first three episodes movie. you were like what is happening here you know what the heck is this but i i love the development of those characters and where that went and i'm excited to see where those characters go and i think that's the the uh cool thing about them. and the filming was just beautiful it was and i am a a, 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 a you know a sitcom, sitcom fan sitcom. so that whole thing was really fun it was, to watch it was the, the first one in their series their limited series which made yeah. it set it up for so yeah, I learned good. so much on that one. And honestly, that was my second favorite MCU yeah. series after right. the, my All number right. one, which I'll tell you in a minute. So my number right. three was Succession. I have been watching that. Oh my gosh, that is so good. The characters in that are so brilliant. And it just had, it just ended a little bit ago for the, for the season. It's brilliant. You can't wait for the next one. Also HBO. Yeah, we're, that we're, that's going to be our New Year's uh, Eve uh, show. I think You'll love it. You'll love it because it's just, it's just, it's again, it, it's it's apropos for you know, the billionaire um, media moguls and and how some of these folks live and how they can influence stuff. It's really interesting. So that was my number three. What about your number two? So, number two for me was Only Murders in the Building. Oh, I've heard about this being good. I got to add that to my list. Okay. It, I, I, don't, I don't know if I just built, I because they advertised that for months before it was out. And I kept saying to, to my to my sweet bee, let's watch Only Murders in the Building because it would be on as a coming soon on the, you know, on Hulu. I think it was Hulu. Might have been Netflix. Anyway, um, but it was never there. So when it finally got there, I was like beyond excited. It's just okay. fantastic with, with uh, you know, um, Martin Short and... Um, Steve Martin, Steve Martin. Gomez, brilliant, oh, brilliant. You will enjoy it, Jana Bryan. Okay. It's a great show. Plus, it took place in New York, which we love. So, honestly, I need something else next. Okay, so my yeah. number two, Ted Lasso, and what happened? I started watching this with a friend, and I didn't have the Apple Plus. And then what happened one day is I got I have Hulu and Disney, and I mean, uh, not uh, no, sorry. That's I bundled all that together and got a good deal right. on that. But I got something from Apple one day that said, hey, you're paying for um, Apple Music, which I love, and something else that I have. It's like you could save money if you just pay this much and get Apple Plus. And I'm like, yes, because I want to watch Ted Lasso. So brilliant. Love it. Is All the accolades you hear about it is excellent, and it's just brilliant. I, I love that show, so I can't wait for that. I, I already yeah, I've heard nothing, all but it. I've heard nothing but great things about that. It's so great. Once again. Just got to find and, time and, to and watch it, and it talks on mental health and it gets into some other yeah, things, that's and, cool. you know, and it's just so well written. Uh, it's just so good. And what's your number one? My number one is another MCU it's probably mine series. Too. Hawkeye was my you, favorite. You like it better than Loki? Loved it way better okay. than Loki. Mine was. Now, I love Loki, so don't get me wrong. But like I said, I had to really think these things through for crying out loud, you know. But I thought Hawkeye was so good because it took a character. What I yeah. loved about that show, so and, you really and they talked know, about you got to know him, right? Yeah. And they talked about it a lot during that. Yeah. That he had no powers. He has no superpowers. Yeah. He's very, very um, disturbed. Yeah. You know, yeah. talk about mental health. Um, uh, but. The breakout of that certainly was the Kate Bishop character um, and the introduction of her into the storyline was fantastic. Plus, it took place in New York, too, at Christmas time. How well, honestly, you, how that, that was that? a good one, too. And I just finished watching that and I couldn't wait for that to come come out each week, too. You guys oh. like wait for it to all come out, then you watch it. but Or maybe you watch them three and three or something. Yeah, we did know. three and three this time. I couldn't wait. 
Yeah, it was brilliant. So I agree with that. So come on, uh, MCU and Disney Plus. We're ready for more of those in 2022. I, I got to so do a couple of shout outs. Right? Yeah. I'm going to do a shout out. I'm not going to do this top five. I'm just going to talk about two streaming um, movies or two movies on streaming services that I just recently watched that um, I have to just do a shout out to uh, Matrix. Um, I'm a huge uh... Matrix fan. And it is, if you like the Matrix, especially like the first one, um, you got to watch Matrix Resurrections. They re It's 20 years later. That's cool. It's got this beautiful, you know, Neo and, I'm, you know, like Neo and um, Trinity uh, theme in there. It's just awesome. I love it. I got to watch it again because it was just that good. Love, I love those two characters. It was really good. And I also just watched Power of the Dog. Oh. with uh benedict cumberbatch and um i forget the other guys that are in that um can't think of their all oh, the actress was great it's awesome that is really deep and um uh, well done western it was the cinematography was brilliant in it. it was a cool director it was awesome and the other last thing that i found to be so great i don't know if you're an adele fan yeah but adele 30 you know she's gone through a transformation and a lot of her own issues and so forth and has been gone for like six seven years and I finally saw that one night only on demand, CBS on demand. It's awesome. It's just where so that, uplifting. Where was that film? Yeah. Mm -hmm. what, where was that oh, film? Was it, what? it was at the Griffith Observatory. That's right. And it was beautiful. It's gorgeous. Yeah. And they have scenes of the, the, the sun is setting and it's all yeah. celebrities that are in the audience. Um, and it's uh, in between her doing that, Oprah's interviewing her and you get a little insight into where she's come and all the stuff she's gone through and how she wrote this new album. And Adele 30, definitely on the top of my list for um list, i'm listening to it right now so that kind of concludes my entertainment for uh, 2022 my my list of, of faves. That's sweet. i'm looking forward to uh feeling well i'm sure i'll be waiting to see spider-man in the on tv because i'm really like you said not really ready to go back to the movie theater yet but boy a lot of other people are because they hit the one billion dollar worldwide mark just this last week that's crazy so any, uh, any final any final words, Jim? No, I'm, I I just want to maybe end with how I started that 2021 has been a, a very transformative change has been a theme for me, but it, it's been welcome, welcomed, and I uh, and I have a lot of gratitude. That was another key word for me this year. Uh, I am excited about 2022 and the direction everything is going for me. I'm in really great space and I'm happy and I love living in Florida and being closer to my family and all is well. Yeah, I'd love to hear all that. And it's been fun mm -hmm. to watch you make that that step. And, and it's, there's nothing better than watching people realize their goals. That is a fantastic thing. Even if you're just long for the ride, it's fun to watch that. So Let's do it. It's freaking awesome. All right, everyone. Once again, you can find all of the show notes and a lot of links to all of the things we talked about today over at uh, WBNLpodcast.com, where so th this is episode 195. Um, and then, you know, while you're over there, just click around on our website. We've got a lot of freebies there, free courses, free downloads, and a bunch of really awesome courses that you should check out for the new year. If you aren't ready to, if you haven't done your business plan, if you haven't been following us and getting your business plan done over the last last three months, it's not too late. It's never too late to business plan. We've got some free business plan courses you can jump into right over there. So we're going to be talking a lot more about that in the new year. A lot of great stuff coming up in the new year, Jan and Brian. So we're excited about all of Let's that. Let's do it. That's right. So, you know, things probably will never be the same, but you know what? That's okay. Yeah. That's okay. The change is good, people. It just it, but here's the deal: you got to embrace it. If you don't embrace it, and you're always trying to 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 run from it, it's not going to be a good thing. So learn to embrace that change and uh, and accept and and move through the the the, the new world order <laughs> that is going on here today. So thank happy you for new joining. Year. Everyone. Yeah, happy, happy, happy new, new year. year, everyone. Oh yeah, I ha I had that one actually. There we go. Have a happy and safe New Year's Eve, everyone, if you're out partying around uh, this coming weekend. And we will see you in 2022. Be forever wandering, but not lost. Mm -hmm.